Quick correction from the last video. Let me pronounce this word correctly this time. The culture of disruption that began here in Silicon Valley is slowly changing the world's economy. As we went over in ship wars, beginning with military defense, then taking a man to the moon, the tech industry has slowly changed communications, entertainment, and finance. Since this channel is devoted to examining how technology changes things, maybe it's time for a new series. This is the story of Tesla the first disruptive startup that overcame disaster to become the first U.S. new car company in over 50 years. Should we call this Car Wars? During the first half of the 20th century, before the rise of Silicon Valley, the U.S. car industry represented American innovation. It really was the heart and soul of U.S. industrial and military power. And the car industry really took off after World War II when gas prices stabilized, suburbs grew, and the United States built a national freeway infrastructure. All of these things combined made Detroit the center of American innovation. But during the 1970s, while these companies were building a new PC industry, foreign competition and rising oil prices started to erode the power of the big three. The moment of truth came during the 2008 financial crisis when two of the big three went bankrupt. Years of bad decisions, rising oil prices, and the global recession required the U.S. government to bail them out and practically nationalize GM until the two companies could declare bankruptcy in mid-2009. It was at precisely this time, during the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression, that a new Silicon Valley startup raised enough money to put its new luxury car into production. So while most of the country was worried about the fallout effects from the bankruptcy of Detroit, Tesla and its founder, headquartered here in Palo Alto, began building a new infrastructure for automobile transportation. As I've said before, the most disruptive leaders never let a good crisis go to waste. First, some history. Founded in 2003, Tesla's goal was to commercialize electric vehicles as quickly as possible. But during this time, because gas-guzzling SUVs were popular and profitable, the U.S. auto companies didn't want anything to change. So in walks Elon Musk. Those Merlin engines are fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good idea for an electric jet. Before this cameo, he was just a Silicon Valley entrepreneur who just finished selling PayPal to eBay and founded SpaceX, a private company trying to re-energize space travel. In April of 2004, he invested $6.8 million in Tesla, establishing the first Silicon Valley car startup. But besides money and talent, every startup needs a strategy. If Tesla was going to commercialize electric vehicles while challenging the big three, it needed a strong path to market. So Tesla decided to apply the traditional tech innovation adoption life cycle to cars. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we all know this strategy really well. It starts with companies making expensive high-end products targeting rich early adopters. If successful, they make cheaper versions at greater scale. We see this all the time in the computer and gaming market. At launch, the latest games and technologies are always expensive, but over time, they go down in price. But this was the first time this adoption strategy was used in the car industry. Tesla's problem? Building luxury cars is extremely expensive. It requires a lot of cash up front. So the company needed to start small. Instead of building the entire car from scratch, Tesla outsourced the chassis to Lotus, the batteries to Panasonic, and focused on the electronics, drivetrain, and motor themselves. And in terms of work, Elon Musk focused on product design. And just two years later, the Tesla Roadster was revealed. But what really was Tesla's secret? While other electric cars relied on expensive custom batteries, Tesla cleverly re-engineered existing commodity batteries used in laptops and smartphones today. The Roadster was the first highway-capable electric vehicle capable of running over 200 miles on a single charge. The carbon fiber panels made it lighter and more practical. And after seeing the first prototype, Tesla was able to raise even more money from other venture capitalists, including these Google founders. The launch was a huge success. In three weeks, the company sold over 100 roadsters to celebrities like Governor Schwarzenegger, Leonardo DiCaprio, and George Clooney. But during production, the company nearly collapsed. The production of the roadster spiraled out of control as costs more than doubled. By 2007, just one year after revealing the roadster, the company was quickly running out of money. So Elon Musk stepped up himself and personally invested another $40 million. 
But this time, he fired a bunch of people and took over the company as CEO. Right away, Tesla began building out its retail strategy, company-owned showrooms where customers could buy direct from Tesla. No commissions, no haggling, no pressure. Now in the US, most states have dealership protection laws requiring customers to buy through dealers, forcing them to pay a dealer markup. But Tesla wanted to sell cars the same way Dell sold computers. Direct to the customer, no middleman. And everything seemed to be going according to plan until the world economy was hit with the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. And the U.S. auto industry in particular was hit so hard that the U.S. government had to step in and bail them out. And now Tesla's strategy to sell sports cars to rich early adopters seemed even more risky than before. And to make matters worse, at this time Tesla needed even more money to survive. Luckily, this time it was able to borrow $40 million from existing investors to begin production of the Roadster. Then in mid-2009, during the crisis, Tesla made its first profit. But if the company was going to take the next step of producing mid-priced cars at higher volumes, it would need more money. A lot more money. And this time, Elon Musk was out of cash. So first, Tesla tried to sell its technology to other companies, in effect becoming an original equipment manufacturer, or OEM. Tesla already had great drivetrain and battery technology, so why not monetize it? So Elon Musk flew to Germany to see if Daimler Mercedes would be interested. And in exchange for an investment, Tesla won the contract to supply the parts for over 2,000 European smart cars. So by mid-2009, Daimler invested $50 million for 10% of the company and pledged to help Tesla produce its first full-size luxury sedan. Then things really started to work out. The U.S. Department of Energy loaned Tesla $465 million as part of a program to incentivize car makers to come up with more energy-efficient solutions. The worst was over as both Daimler and the U.S. taxpayer helped keep Tesla alive during the financial crisis. Now freshly recapitalized, Tesla raised another $82.5 million to continue building out its retail strategy. The next year, Tesla announced another strategic partnership. Toyota bought $50 million in Tesla stock, and Tesla bought Toyota's recently closed car factory in the East Bay. You know, I, I really am a big believer in, in, in manufacturing. At one point in time, this Numi car factory was producing half a million cars per year. Now Tesla had the room to grow. So now with its own factory, Tesla needed a lot more money to start producing its next car. For this young startup, the moment of truth had come, the IPO. And despite the recession, it was a huge success, raising $226 million, valuing the company at over $2 billion. On June 29, 2010, Tesla became the first American car company to go public since Ford in 1956. And almost exactly two years later, Tesla delivered its next car the Model S. In just six months, Model S deliveries were greater than all the Roadsters ever sold, and today Tesla's producing over 700 cars a week. But Tesla is also building out the infrastructure required to support these new cars. These prices include free lifetime use of Tesla's network of superchargers, charging stations around the country that add an extra 170 miles to your car in under 30 minutes. Using technologies provided by SolarCity, a solar energy company whose chairman of the board happens to be Elon Musk himself, Tesla's charging stations are expanding to cover the most popular driving routes throughout the United States, Europe, and Asia. And Tesla is just getting started. Two years ago, the company unveiled the Model X, a full-size crossover based on the Model S platform with the same two battery options. And the most distinguishing feature will be the gullwing Falcon doors that open upwards. Already, over 13,000 people paid $5,000 to reserve the Model X, even though the car won't be delivered until next year. Tesla expects to sell at least 15,000 of these in 2015. And the company is still raising a lot of money. Last year, it raised a billion dollars by selling stock, and this past March, it easily borrowed another two billion. And the question is, why do they need all this money? Remember, Tesla's strategy is to quickly commercialize electronic vehicles, but all the current infrastructure really caters to gas-powered cars. So besides building charging stations, the company needs the money to build more service centers. And to get enough batteries for the future, both Tesla and Panasonic just confirmed a strategic partnership to build a new $5 billion battery gigafactory near Reno, Nevada. Once running, this factory alone will double the global supply of lithium-ion battery production today. So with all the pieces falling into place, just three months ago, Tesla announced the name of its upcoming low-price, high-volume car. 
the Model 3. The Tesla design chief called it an Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz Class C type of vehicle, starting at $35,000. And remember Google's investment in Tesla? A couple of weeks ago, Elon Musk himself announced that autonomous vehicle technology will be ready in five to six years. And that brings us to today. Last week, the CEO tweeted, about time to unveil the D and something else. So Tesla is really a classic innovation story, starting with big dreams, near failure, and seemingly improbable success. Because of Tesla, the future of cars is looking bright, and I'm personally excited to see how Tesla uses its technology to change things in the car industry. So thank you guys for watching this video. I apologize that it's a little off track from what I promised. I'm still working on a next Network Wars video that compares all the US cellular carriers out there today. Um, I just wanted to get this video out because of the announcement coming up this Thursday or Friday. So I'll be posting an update to this video. Really, it allowed me to look at the company in a totally different way. Personally, I've only ever bought two cars in my life. And if any of you out there are car enthusiasts, I'd love to hear your comments, um, your opinions, your thoughts. And as always, thank you for all the feedback in the other videos. I've been working on replying to many of your comments, as you've probably noticed. And especially thank you guys for watching these videos and supporting the channel as we continue to look at how technology changes things.